Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about stagnation properties, specifically finding the equations or expressions for the uh, stagnation to static temperature, pressure, and density. You can see that the stagnation temperature appears on the numerator, and the static temperature is in the denominator. Similarly here, stagnation pressure, static pressure, stagnation density, static density here. Uh, you'll see different forms of how to write the stagnation properties. I'm doing this for temperature over here just as an example. Uh, we pronounce it T naught for the stagnation temperature. So if I want the stagnation temperature, I say T naught, stagnation pressure, P naught, etc. Some different forms that you'll see in different books are shown here. So you have T sub O, T sub zero, T sub lowercase t, where the t stands for total, and sometimes you'll even just see the total given as a capital T when the static temperature is given as a lowercase t. And you may be asking yourself why we even need to uh, bother with stagnation states, and one of the reasons is that it's a convenient stepping stone between uh, two different states of interest. So if we're talking about state one down here with literal stepping stones, we have uh, me on state one here, and I'm trying to get to state two, but I can't jump that far. So one of the uh, convenient ways that we can get there is to jump to this intermediate stagnation state and then get from that stagnation state to state two. If you want to see uh, an example of this in action, I have a video that I'll post here trying to analyze the inlet or diffuser of a turbofan engine. So we're going to start with the 1D energy equation. It's adiabatic, uh, meaning that Q is equal to zero. I have a video on this that I'll post here and link to in the video description. And so that result from that video is this equation here, where the enthalpy at one plus one half times the velocity at one squared equals enthalpy at two plus one half the velocity at two squared. And this relates states one and two together, states one and two together. And if we start with a gas at state one, and then we bring it to rest, so this, so state two is us just saying, okay, there's another state, and we're just going to bring this gas all the way to rest, no more velocity. It's adiabatic inherently because this equation does not, is the adiabatic energy equation does not include that Q term. And so we're going to bring it to rest, and we're going to designate this arbitrary state with the not designation. And so that means that we end up with this equation here. We have the starting at state one, that's the same, and then state two, we we brought it to rest, so we denote that with the naught. And then what happens is since we brought it to rest, which means the velocity is equal to zero, that means that this term goes to zero. And what we have is the enthalpy stagnation enthalpy defined as the static enthalpy plus one half velocity squared. And so you can see that the H naught is defined as the stagnation enthalpy. The next thing I'm going to do is assume that we are dealing with a calorically perfect gas, and that means that our uh, specific heats are constant, so Cp is equal to constant, Cv is equal to a constant. This is the equation we had from the other board, where the stagnation enthalpy is equal to the static enthalpy plus one half times the velocity squared, and we're going to use H is equal to CPT, where CP is a constant. It does not vary with temperature. If we had a thermally perfect gas, we'd have CP varying with temperature. I'll have a video on that that I'll link to here. And if we plug this in, this expression in here, we have for H naught, we get CPT naught. For H, we have CPT, and this term stays the same. And we can divide the entire equation by CP because it's a constant. And that gives us an expression for the stagnation temperature is equal to the static temperature plus U squared over two times CP, where T naught is defined as the stagnation temperature. Uh, just be reminded that this is uh, this expression where the stagnation temperature is defined as this uh, was based off of adiabatically slowing down this flow to zero velocity. But our goal is to solve for these ratios, the stagnation to static ratios for temperature, pressure, and density because this is what will be useful. Now that we have the equation for the stagnation temperature, I'm going to use some of these expressions up here that I have in other videos. The ratio of specific heats is defined as Cp over Cv. Cp can to be defined based off of the ratio of specific heats and the specific gas constant R. The speed of sound A is equal to the square root of gamma RT, and the Mach number is defined as the uh, local velocity over the local speed of sound. And so if we take our expression from the previous whiteboard and we divide it by T, then we have this expression for T naught over T, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 1 plus u squared over 2 CPT. We can plug in for CP from here, and we get 1 plus u squared over, and now we have 2 and the gamma r is here times t over, since we have a, over here, gamma minus 1. And now, if we split this up, I'm going to take this gamma minus 1 and 2, and I'm going to flip them because of uh, the way they're oriented in the denominator here. So we have 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, and we're left with u squared over gamma rt. And you can see from here that gamma rt is just equal to a squared, so we can plug that in for here. And we end up with this expression here, and then you can see that u over a is equal to m, so u squared over a squared is just equal to m squared, the Mach number squared. And we end up with our final relationship for the step 
stagnation temperature over the static temperature is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times m squared. And recall, again, it's important that this stagnation temperature is defined as the temperature that will be reached if we bring our flow adiabatically to rest. That means that it does not need to be brought to rest reversibly. Now that we have the expression for the stagnation to static temperatures, uh, we want to find the stagnation to static pressure and the stagnation to static density. So we need to make another limiting assumption, and that is that the process is reversible. And recall that the energy equation that we started with was defined as being an adiabatic process, and if we make this reversible assumption, both of these combined give us the fact that the process is isentropic. And if you go to my isentropic video, then you can see that these are the expressions that relate pressure and temperature ratios for an isentropic process and pressure and density ratios for an isentropic process. Now let's define the uh, stagnation to static pressure ratio. You can see I've rewritten the isentropic relation here. You'll note that this equation was derived from setting the entropy equation, the change in entropy equal to zero, so the delta S equal to zero. So you can see that this is relating state one and state two along a path where the entropy does not change. And if we say that this second state is where the velocity is equal to zero, that means we've slowed down the flow from state one to state naught isentropically. And we can rewrite this isentropic relation as P naught over P is equal to T naught over T to the gamma over gamma minus one. We already have an expression for the stagnation to static temperature ratio, and we just plug that right into here, and we get the expression for P naught over P is equal to one plus gamma minus one over two n squared to the gamma over gamma minus one. Now all we have left to do is to find the stagnation to static density ratio. So I'm gonna start with this. I just flipped this from the previous, uh, from the previous whiteboard, and I'm just going to uh, bring the exponent to the other side. So we have the ratio here is equal to this ratio to the one over gamma, where this is the uh, equation that we also had on the previous whiteboard. So I can plug in this into here, and I get this expression for the stagnation to static density ratio. And then we just multiply the exponents together, and the gamma here cancels with the gamma there, and we get the expression for the stagnation to static density uh, in terms of the stagnation to static temperature to the one over gamma minus one. And so we'll just plug in that stagnation to static temperature ratio in here, similarly from the previous from the uh, pressure ratio equation, and we end up getting rho naught over rho is equal to one plus gamma minus one over two Mach number squared to the one over gamma minus one. So I've written all the solutions here, all these stagnation to static ratios here, and you'll note that each of these equations is only a function of the specific heat ratio gamma and the Mach number m. So what you can do then is for a calorically perfect gas, we can tabulate these ratios as a function of Mach number for a given value of gamma and usually you'll see the given value of gamma is equal to 1.4 because that's what it is for air in general. And so you'll see that these ratios are tabulated as a function of Mach number and that'll give you at a, at a given Mach number you can relate the stagnation temperature pressure density to the static temperature pressure density. Now just a couple final notes about these stagnation to static ratios. You can use these ratios at any point in a flow even if the flow is not adiabatic or reversible. And you'll see why this is useful in some of my upcoming videos. But essentially you can say that at state one, we can uh, have a static temperature, and we can also define a stagnation temperature at one. And then at point two here, even if, this, if the process from one to two is not adiabatic or reversible, you'll have a static temperature two, and you can define a stagnation temperature two here. Let's say then that the isentropic, uh, that the flow field is isentropic, which means that from state one to state two, the entropy does not change. Then in fact, your computed stagnation temperatures will be the same, stagnation pressures will be the same, stagna uh, stagnation densities will be the same. Now let's say that you have an adiabatic flow field, but it's not reversible anymore, your stagnation temperatures will still be the same and your stagnation enthalpy. However, now your stagnation pressures and your stagnation densities will not be the same. If you want to stay updated with my future compressible flow videos, then please subscribe and thanks for watching.